The last time we looked at the lifting mechanism for this, my 13 kilo sportsman lifter, strange young man, it uh, didn't go well. And today we are going to fix that problem or we are going to replace the weapon system entirely. Whatever happens today, there is a new weapon system on this robot that will get it to fight at the Robo Wars event. To start this video, we have to say a big thank you to James at Broken Link Robotics. I will leave a link to his channel down below. He has rush made me some brand new parts for the lifting mechanism here to replace the broken key pin, but also replace the stack up that I put on that key pin to help us try and get this lift mechanism working as it currently exists on the robot. So let's actually have a look at those parts. So as a refresher, here is what happened last time. The key pin absolutely sheared and destroyed itself inside our hub. This is a steel sprocket and a hardened steel hub in the middle that are welded together very sloppily. And yeah, it just wasn't enough material to grab the key pin and so it bent itself really, really badly out of shape with all the talk that was going on. So in discussing this with James, we looked at the fact that this is just too thin. And so he's made up a brand new hub, which is the exact width of the key pin. So this will give way more surface area to transfer torque through and hopefully means that the key pin does not just shear itself off this time because it can actually transfer torque a lot better. Well, that's the plan anyway. The other thing here is that I realized when you look at this key pin, it has smushed itself up into the hole that is made for it. There was a little bit of space at the top for the pin and that seems to be more than enough for the pin to have like skipped itself out of its little groove that it's supposed to be in. This new hub that James has made has a little grub screw in it. This helps to retain the hub itself, but it will also help to actually force that key pin down and keep it into the motor shaft, which should mean that we don't do this again. Uh, obviously, this is all welded together. I really, really did not feel like cutting all of this back out again and then grinding out all of these holes. That was gonna take a ton of time and effort. So James also did up some new sprockets. These ones are in aluminium, but I could get some new ones laser cut if I need them later on. James thinks that this is gonna be okay. He's run a lifter himself with aluminium sprockets. So everything hopefully should work a little bit better. I mean, the, na the aim of the game is to try and get all of the torque off the motor shaft all the way through the chain and up into the lift arms without breaking anything, which means, yeah, getting uh, as strong as we possibly can. All right, that's five bolts bolted up. So we're gonna throw this on the motor shaft. It's a pretty close fit, which is good. Uh, I might need to sit down and just sand the inside just a little bit because it's not going quite all the way on there yet, but that's okay. Uh, there was just a little bit of material that was left just to like let me snug this fit as much as I want it basically. So take two, we push this on here all the way down. It doesn't go quite all the way. It doesn't seem like, ah, oh, come on, you can do it. All right, well, look, we're almost there. We've got like half a mil of the key pin not in spot. And then if I put this guy on the mount, that actually lines up pretty well with the other chain link. So we're gonna lock this in place here with our grub screw by tightening this all the way down. And then we can put our other bolt in and have a working system, hopefully. Fingers crossed, that would be really nice. Ah, okay, so I need to lift the arm up and then also get the nut on this thing, which is gonna be difficult. Ah, ah, or I can lift the base. Okay, there we go. So now we do that and do that. That should keep the thing. 
together. Yes, look at that, beautiful. All right, now I can get the other bolt in too, hopefully. Might again need to lift the arm up to remove tension, get the bolt in, get the nut on, and then tighten everything down. Seems good to me. Hopefully it stays that way when we spin everything outside in a second. So as we did before, we're gonna start with an arm test. So. That is looking pretty good. So let's go put some weight on it. We'll go slower this time though. We're gonna start with about five kilos and try from here. Okay, <sighs> let's actually work out what went wrong here. Because of course, we can't do anything about it if we don't know what actually happened. I really hope it wasn't the key pin. It's basically all I can say because, uh, well, actually maybe I do hope because if it's not the key pin, something else has gone drastically wrong. So it turns out, no, the key pin is totally fine. The new pulley is totally fine. All of this looks like it worked and held up pretty well. Uh, you can hear and see gears skipping. This gearbox is that uh, high powered or high reduction. You shouldn't be able to turn this by hand and we absolutely can. Uh, I've actually already opened this up and confirmed my suspicions and our uh, Winner of the I Told You So award is uh, UHM Marky, who commented on the last video saying that this style of gearbox cannot handle high torque. And they were very, very right about that. Uh, this is the gearbox and this gear here, I'm gonna pull out right now. Not only is it a little bit warped, but also it is completely sheared off. That should be attached to the plate in here and you can see the other half of it still in that plate. Uh, that is what snapped when the whole thing broke is right in there. Ay ay ay. So we need a stronger gearbox. That is uh, at least apparent at this point in time. We certainly need something that will stand up a little bit better to the forces at play here. We should also have a reduction between the output stage and uh, the top. Having these pulleys or having these sprockets be one-to-one -one seems to be doing a very, very bad job for me. Uh, so I was talking to a group of builders here in Australia and talking about the fact that this had all failed. They suggested a new, bigger, stronger gearbox from a winch, but I don't have a winch and the competition here is in a couple of weeks time. Australian shipping is just so long. There is no way I can get a winch here in two weeks. However, we have a big thank you to Steve at ARC because he has given me a whole winch. Look at this thing, it is huge. Now it is very, very heavy and realistically all we need is this bit here. There is a section which is the planetary gearbox uh, we can take off this motor and hopefully replace it with a brushless one. We can take off the winch drum. We can take off this extra metal around the edges and stuff. Uh, so I think that is my next like three hours is going to be sitting here working out how to disable and uh, take this winch apart. We are going to speed through this winch tear down a little bit for reasons you will see in a second here. Well, not this bit though. This bit was kind of cathartic. Ah, well, this chassis continues to be a problem. So uh, this is the gearbox off of a winch or off of the winch that I was pulling apart. This is the stator out of that with the gear on it that I would need to put into here. But unfortunately also, despite the fact that I've got a ton of holes in here to mount everything up, this bolt spacing is incorrect. Uh, the closest I can get is by jamming the gearbox all the way into the shaft and that just actually still doesn't even really work. Uh, the bolts get the closest they can be to lining up, but even then I need the bolt hole at the back 
to be further this way and there's no metal there, uh, which doesn't work. Um, yeah, so not only would I need to do a very, very complex piece of metal work and turning to get this gear off of here and onto a motor correctly, uh, I'd also need to work out how to mount the spline up that goes on the output shaft because this just kind of fits in here nicely uh, and it needs to be held in there. All of this is stuff that should be doable, but from first principles. Trying to kind of bodge this back into this frame is going to require like new laser cut parts and a whole new way to bolt everything up and stuff. It's just complicated. The problem that I'm really facing here is one of tech debt or something similar to that. That's just a term that has been used before for this. Effectively, this is like the fifth version of Strange Young Man and each version has just been kind of like bodged from the old version in CAD, which means that there are little design choices here and there and little compromises here and there that the compromise was made for version one for components that don't exist anymore, that broke, that didn't work, that got replaced in version two and version three. But those compromises still exist in the design, in the size, in how things mesh together. Realistically, I probably need to redesign this entire thing from the ground up. Like this winch gearbox, is exceptional. This thing is ridiculously sturdy and with the right amount of time to do this machining and stuff, this is going to be the right choice for this robot, but it isn't today uh, because this is months worth of work to get this into this design properly. So yeah, we're just, we're just not doing this today. Also, the other problem with this is that it's absolutely massive. Uh, it actually eclipses the sidewalls that I have for the design, which again is another compromise in this design is that at the moment we're running lower height sidewalls than I was originally running. So I think my best move at this point in time is to throw in the towel on the lifting system and go back to a hammer. Last time I did the hammer, I used this, which is a 5065 brushless motor with a 20 tooth HDT5 belt on it, uh, which I did not remember, but apparently I slotted the bolt holes down here, which means that I could bolt them in and then move them back and tighten them down to tighten up the belt. This isn't a great idea. This kind of thing doesn't work particularly well. You really need like a bolt forcing the thing away from where it needs to be to get it to work. So I think I might even just try and set this back up exactly as it was uh, with the slotting and everything, and then also try and force it back towards the back of the robot with the belt set up and see if we can get this thing to work without it skipping this time, because that was the problem last time. Well, this feels very familiar, so let's just give this a whack and see what happens. Uh, remembering that last time we did this, it was the return back that was the problem and not the forwards that was the problem. All right, forwards. Okay, the belt is apparently too tight now because that doesn't even want to do that this time. <sighs> well, it seems like for whatever reason, the belt tension there was too tight or something and I just wasn't have, like didn't have enough power in that motor to get that big hammerhead to throw. So in desperation, we're putting this on. This is an old system that I designed a little while ago. It's literally just a screwdriver in a piece of aluminium. This weighs nothing compared to all that steel and a hammerhead. Let, let's try it out. Three, two, one. Okay, that worked. We, we have a, a plan. We have, well, kind of. I'd really, really like to be swinging something a little more like substantial than that tiny little screwdriver, but look, a, a start is a start. So, I mean, 
thinking about it, I really think that all we need to get the hammer actually working again is a little bit more power, which probably actually in this case means a gearbox. So I have a gearbox that I bought as a experimental gearbox for the drive system for this robot, which we'll talk about at a later date. So how about we put all of that together and turn that into the weapon system here. That does mean pushing a brand new pinion gear onto our motor and then laying out a whole bunch of parts and assembling it together. The motor needs to be locked into the motor mounting plate, which is just a 3D print for now. Then the gearbox gets mounted onto the motor mounting plate as well. Then we attach the gearbox mounting plate. And then finally we attach the HTD5 pulley onto the end. And while we're at it, we are going to change up the weapon system. I have found a hatchet that is about the same size and weight as the hammer. This I think is gonna be a good idea. So we're gonna very quickly fab up a whole new attachment section for the arm to hold a hatchet head instead. And then finally we can put all of that stuff onto the robot and take it out for a test. Uh, okay, the ax, the ax is there. It's time to try a test. Yes, all right, well, that that is good. We have a weapon and it looks awesome. I mean, this is going to need some paint at some point, but at this point in time, getting something working is 100% my goal, uh, and I will deal with the aesthetics later if I've got time before the competition. I am still, though, pretty happy with how this thing looks and behaves at this point in time. This is really, really good. So on top of also being able to throw the ax head here, it can also throw the old hammer head and a new one as well. Everything is just interchangeable with some bolts up the top here, which is great. That means I can pick and choose my weapon attachment for my opponent, which is going to be really, really helpful. There was a little bit of belt skip there as I tried to retract the axe with the block of wood stuck to it. Uh, and that is a little bit of a problem because it means that this is right near the limit of what the actual belt system can hold tension wise, or at least with the current tightness of the belt. I have a plan on how I'm gonna tighten the belt up just that little bit more to give me a little bit more tension and hopefully it will be able to self righten things all on its own. But for now, I'm going to leave good enough as it is because I've got a lot more work left to do on this robot. A uh, weapon system on a hard ox frame does not a robot make. So we've got what much more to do here. This is going to be the end of this video though. I will have another video out about the drive system and I might even do one about the painting as well. If not, then if I do manage to do some painting on this robot, you will see that uh, in the fight report. Anyway, that is going to be it for this video. I hope you have enjoyed that one and I will see you in the next video.